It's good to speak with you today, Jeff, and looking forward to hearing your 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 um, views today and experience on the keys to being a successful entrepreneur. Um, before we start, can you provide a well, brief appreciate... background of yourself? Sure, not a problem, Dustin. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I have been uh, in executive search now for a little over a decade. I've had my own firm for about six and a half years. I specialize in working at the retained with manufacturing companies, primarily in the U.S., North America, uh, though a number of my clients tend to be global organizations. And then um, I'm a father, um, husband, and uh, enjoy uh, college football, American football here in the U.S. Thank you. So what are the keys to being a successful entrepreneur? You know, I think the first one is kind of simple and, and, and yet complex in knowing who you are as an individual. Uh, being an entrepreneurial, I, I've learned there are, uh, there are a lot of, of things I needed to improve in my own skill set um, in, in terms of follow-up, in terms of sales calls, in terms of motivation. I think one of the hardest things I found when I left my firm I was with prior to open my own firm is that there's really no one above you kind of pushing you to, to get stuff done. You've got to be really self-motivated, really focused on, on making calls or making contacts or whatever it might be within your business, uh, sales calls, uh, getting out the word whether it's social media, cold calls, networking calls, you've got to be very self-driven there. And so early on, it was uh, I'll, I'll admit it was a struggle for me because I had always had a, you know, that peer or mentor to, to kind of push me and say, Jeff, or in the mirror and say, you know, I need to do these things a little bit better. So I think knowing yourself, knowing your strengths and weaknesses are important. I would say uh, a second one is really, even though you're 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 opening your own business, having some type of mentor has been key to me. Uh, I've got a uh, two or three gentlemen that I can rely on, both in search and outside of search, that are just successful businessmen that I turn to for ideas, uh, brainstorming. Um, looking at them for guidance when it comes to how to set up my business, how to handle my sales calls, how to handle my recruiting calls, how to work with professionals uh, at the mid-level as well as the executive level, just to have an individual or two to, to bounce ideas off. It, um, at times early on, I found it was very um, lonely if you will, in, in running your own business because there's, you know, you're expected to, to have all the answers. You're expected to know everything. And quite honestly, I, I don't know that I do know everything, to be, to be frank with you, Dustin. I don't, I, and I assure you uh, I'm not an expert at everything. And so having a peer group or mentors that you can go to uh, is critical there. Some people set up a, a, a mini board of directors, even though they might not have a financial investment in the business, uh, but perhaps have a, um, a friendship or you know professional friendship interest in the individual. I think that's very appropriate. So whatever you want to look at it that way, I think are, are important. I would say the third one is to really understand your finances whether you're going to self-finance the business, whether you're going to take out some type of, of business loan, uh, but to really know what your month-to-month -month bills look like. And I know that's small beans, perhaps, but when you're starting up a, a small business to mid-sized business, so much of it is cash flow and can I pay my bills this month and, and things along those lines. And so, and so really sitting down with a, a good, strong accountant, uh, making sure your budget is in place, uh, making sure you've 
you've got, in my opinion, a good three to six months of rev excuse me of of cash on on site or on hand so that you can get started and not have to have revenue let's say the first two or three months to be able to get things up and going and then finally I would say at least in my business um, I needed to have some key contacts that I that I was pretty confident that would become clients fairly quickly and obviously these are folks uh, that I had worked with uh, over the years in search in, in my industry in search having either done search work for them through my prior form or simply having connected with them as potentially a candidate or a resource for candidates uh, there were two to three key individuals that when I was debating going out on my own that I reached out to and said if I did this what is the likelihood that you and your business would 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 use me for search and, and things along those lines and and so almost that I had not a guarantee because nothing's you know obviously guaranteed but that I had fairly confident assurances that within the first six months two to three of my key contacts would have some search activity for me, which would obviously provide income, provide uh, opportunities to prove myself, and kind of get the ball rolling along those lines. And why did you become an entrepreneur? You know, um, I'm a, most entrepreneurs will say they do it to, to make more money, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I became an entrepreneurial so that I could, to an extent, control my schedule better. My goal in my life, to be to, to be completely honest, is is to be a father first and a husband first. And so I um, I did it to be able to go to PTA meetings for my kids' schools, to volunteer in their classes, to go on their field trips with them. Now. I can't go to everything and I can't do every volunteer activity but ultimately my goal was to be able to to have a successful business while I raise my children and uh, do you have any recommendations for people who want to want to become uh, entrepreneurs any like a final recommendations on how to do it you know um, I would say you need to be prepared ultimately for the ups and downs. We, we talk about the stock market, we talk about business revenue, we talk about growing revenue, and, and, and I think a lot of people, including myself when I first started, thought that once I got the ball rolling, it would always go up, that the revenue stream would go up and, and, and those type things. The reality is, especially being a small entrepreneurial business. I don't have a lot of employees. Uh, I've only got one uh, basically full-time employee. The rest of, my, uh, the rest of my, my team are kind of contract employees that I use when I need to. So fairly small business um, is that there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be the, the positive year. And there's going to be the next year where it's going to be like, where did everybody go? And I think understanding that, that that's, A, not based just on you as a person, I think is really hard, at least it was for me, in understanding that they're, they're not rejecting me, they just don't have search for me right now. And so obviously staying, staying active, and as I talked about earlier, staying focused on making those calls day in and day out even though you're not getting the results you want right away, but staying in the networking and staying in the, the business of talking to, to decision makers and those type things. Um, but understanding that there will be months you'll be really high and there will be months you'll be kind of low. And that that's just part of the flow, I think, being a small business, uh, an entrepreneurial, that it's not always just going to go up, uh, that it will go down from time to time. and. And being able to balance that, being able to save appropriately when the times are good, 
and being able to, to be frugal where needed uh, when times are, are a little thin. I'm a big believer in keeping my overhead down. I work out of my house primarily. I, I lease a lot of my, my equipment. Um, I lease office space when I need it for professional interviews. So certainly spending money where appropriate, but I don't have a lot of overhead other than kind of my technology background, my, my database, uh, my CRM, whatever you want to call it, you know, computer, phone, those type things are all top quality, but I don't rent office space that I might need four or five times a year. I would rather rent that. So things along those lines. But just understanding that it doesn't always go up, that there will be ups and downs in being an entrepreneurial in terms of revenue, in terms of your feeling about it, and, and those type things, sir. And thanks for sharing today, Jeff. You're very welcome, Dustin. Thanks for the opportunity. I hope it uh, is insightful and uh, enjoyable for your, your audience. Thank you.